nothing changes if you don't take responsibility because when you take responsibility, you have control and you can start taking action. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy. And today is going to be a great day. And I know it's going to be great because we are talking to a phenomenal woman I cannot wait for you to meet. And thank you so much for joining us on our last episode where we, <laughs> we were supposed to talk about shame, but we turned it around, spun it around for Valentine's Day and talked about self-love. And I hope that you enjoyed that episode. It was a powerful one for me. So next episode, be ready to dive straight into the discussion about shame and face it head on. Today, however, we have a superhero when it comes to shame around money, and we're going to talk all about the power and energy behind money. She is a money and a money mindset and accountability coach. How mm. fabulous does that sound? She is also the manager of events and sponsorships at a local nonprofit organization called Winter Kids here in Maine. I know her as the past president of the Maine Women's Conference, where I got to meet her. And she is the host of some incredible webinar series, one called the Align and Empowered Project, which has been transforming the lives of so many people, which I'm so excited for her to tell us about. And today we're also going to be talking about her Money Magnet webinar series. Please Join me in welcoming Mary Teresa Tringali. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. What an introduction. You do Thank it you. all, sister. I couldn't, I could keep going I'm here. So I, I oh. can't believe how much you get done in a day. You're amazing. Well, it's really funny because I was doing a lot less six months ago and now all of a sudden it's all, it's all piling back up again, but it's hard to say no to things that really light you up. Well, isn't that the case with abundance, right? When you open your mind to it, it just keeps coming at you. Yep, yep. There's going to be a time that I'm going to have to start saying no to the things I want to do. And that's when I hear that's when you're really uh, leveling, up, leveling up your life, when you have to say no to things you want to do. Oh, absolutely. Not quite there yet, but oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I'm excited for us to kick off this conversation about the mindset around money because mm -hmm. I know that so many of us have so much to learn and becoming comfortable with money is a big, big deal for every single one of us. So tell us what is the biggest mi misconception that people have about mm -hmm. money? Yeah. Well, I would say that the biggest misconception, well, I think that, that it's hard, that it's a tangible thing and that's it. Mm. Right? That money is either the cash in your in your pocket, in your hands, or the number in your bank account. And money is so much more than that. Money is energy. Money is, there's so much in between. And the stuff that I'm working on is there's, there's the ways of making money, right? And there's tons of people who are teaching us how to make the money. We can sign up for business courses. We go to college. School is all about us learning the skills necessary so that we can go into the world and earn money and be reliable citizens in the workplace and the workforce. And then there's also tons of experts that will teach you the should, coulds, and woulds about how to spend and save and invest that money. Mm -hmm. um, but there's really not a lot of people who are talking about the in-between those two things. And there's so many people who don't even realize, myself included, until somebody else pointed this out to me, that there is an in-between. Mm. That's where the money mindset lives. It's because... The, you know, we're taught there, we're taught from such a young age that we have to earn the money and then we have to figure out what we're supposed to do once we have the money. And actually, there's not a lot of people who are teaching us what to do with that money once we have it. Mm -hmm. So even our money mindset is that the, there's a whole cycle of it that with the money mindset. And it begins with you wanting the money and desiring the money. And then, because that's a non-tangible thing. And then you move on to the space where you start to earn and do the things, take action 
in the doing of the things. So whether that's working in the workforce or creating your own business, um, becoming an entrepreneur, hiring new people, that's all around that making of the money. Then there's a whole space in between the making of the money and the spending of the money. And that's like, that's where I see receiving of money. Oh, big one. Such yeah. a big, important and, part of it. Right. And if you're not o- open to receiving money, all money, then there's some massive blocks that you could be creating there that you're not even realizing. And then there's actually a lot of work that has to be done at mindset wise around that spending and saving and investing of the money. Um, There's a lot of shame Mm -hmm. around what happens when you don't do the right thing, quote unquote, around the spending and the saving and the investing of the money. Um, But nobody's teaching us how to do that right. Yeah. from the get-go so that it's almost like you only know the should and could and woulds right and if you happen to be somebody who's even interested in finances when you go through college you might learn about those things but nobody's really teaching us about that and it's because there's that money is such a taboo subject uh-huh. that nobody's having these open conversations i don't know about you but growing up the things that i heard about money was that we never had enough Absolutely. It was not enough to go around. There's no tree in the backyard that's making us money easily, <laughs> right? Or giving us money. The only way to honestly earn millions of dollars is to win the lottery. Yeah. And it, the, I mean, I could go on and on and on, including that people who have money are crooks. Yes, that's a right? big one. Yeah. And so it's like all of these negative stories about money, no positive stories they dig into you and they become part of you. And we don't even realize it until somebody tells, points it out to us. And only the only reason that it was pointed out to me is because I was working with a business coach who happened to have mindset work on her own, right? So she went through this experience herself. And so she was able to point out these stories to me. And I was like, what are you even talking about that there's work to, there's a mindset. What is my money mindset? And once I understood that I actually had all these underlying stories that were not helping me, um, that's when my journey truly began. And when somebody else had pointed out to me, it's not just about the money in your bank account or what you have, you know, the change or the cash that you have in hand, but think about the money that you've been investing in your 401k. Think about money that you might have in a savings account somewhere else and be grateful for all of that money, even though you can't have it and see it and spend it right now. And for a long time, I thought the only wealth I had was the money that I could spend. Mm. And when there wasn't a lot of that to spend, then I was poor. Mm. And I've never been poor, actually. Right? So there's just so much, there's so much to go around. And I think, think that That's a long answer to what is the biggest misconception with money, but it is that it's money is not a tangible, is not only a tangible thing. It's actually this energy that's all around you and constantly flowing through you. Another big thing was that, that I realized was that I wasn't just, uh, uh, money didn't just flow through me into my bank account. Money flew through me all the time. And especially into the bank's accounts, the bank accounts of the organizations that I work for. Oh, yes. And so that was a huge one for me because last year for Winter Kids, because my job is events and sponsorships, my job is to raise money for our organization. And we had last year the best downhill 24 fundraising event that we've ever had. And I was remember sitting at my desk and thinking we had, I just closed our last sponsorship spot that we had, we were projecting $200,000 over where we were the year before. It looked like, and I couldn't believe this as everybody kept saying it, that there was a chance we could get to half million dollars, which was huge for us, our small little organization. And we, I just remember sitting there and just being so excited because I just closed the sponsorship. I was looking at how much money was come. I mean, constantly every minute there was a new fundraising donation being made. And I just thought, 
I really am a money magnet. And then it dawned on me, it's not just about the money that's going into my bank account. It doesn't mean that I'm not, I'm a money magnet because money flows through me into a bank account. Isn't it doesn't that amazing. have to be saying. I love that mindset shift because yeah. I think that that's so powerful. Just the amount of energy that was passing through you because yeah. of you and positively impacting the world around you. Yeah. And when I looked back on, once I realized that it was like, oh, I've been doing this my entire career because my entire wow. career has had been involved in some sort of sales. So I started as a catering manager of a restaurant in Boston. I moved to New York city and I worked in the magazine industry and I worked in the marketing department of the magazine on the ad sales side. So literally earning money for our magazines to stay yeah. alive. Yeah. I created programs and events. I was writing writing up proposals for advertisers to spend their money with us on the magazine at the magazine side. And then I moved when I moved to Maine, I started working at the Portland Press Herald in the marketing department, creating events for us to sell to advertisers. My whole entire career has been about welcoming in money. And it's just like I never took the time to understand that all of this money was just flowing through me, even though it wasn't flowing into my bank account. And if we can see that, how we are impacting people around us to allow this money to flow through whatever your career may be, then, you know, you could be a vet working as a vet tech and yeah. understand that you are part of the world, part of that process, part of that flow of money from the consumer into the business that you work for. And it's just another way to understand that you truly are just constantly welcoming, welcoming money into your life. It just may not be going into your bank account. Yeah. And the fact that you can also focus your attention on where it goes. You choose whether or not to spend it at Starbucks or to spend it on a car payment or to spend it on a holiday or to spend it on food for yourself. You put uh, one of the quotes that you have on your Facebook page is money is currency and currency is energy. And I love as what you've just been saying is imagining where your energy is going and where you're focusing that energy and the power behind that, that you have. Yeah. So one of a, a big aha that I had was that when I was trying to earn money in a way that wasn't aligned mm. with who I am, it always felt really, really heavy to yes. earn that money. So um, when I had a job I didn't love, I just, it was, I, it was really hard for me to be grateful for the money that was coming in because the way I was earning money was not aligned with who I am. Hmm. Um, and only just in 2020, did I finally get fully aligned with every single way that I've been welcoming in money into my life and that I've been receiving money into my life. And I don't think there's any coincidence that it was the most financially, abundant year of my life that I welcomed in that I finally hit a six figure income for the year. So, um, but that is also, so that's with receiving or that's with earning money and receiving money, right? It goes the same way with spending money. So if you aren't aligned with the way that you're spending money, then that is also going to feel really heavy. So one of the things that I experienced, one of another aha moment that I had was I was sitting in my room and really, really frustrated because all of a sudden I had no money to spend on the things that I wanted and I had just got paid. And it's like, where did all that money go? Hmm. And the answer is that I was spending without caring or being aware or being, it was not mindful spending. Hmm. So the spending was not aligned with who I am or what I wanted to do with my life or how I wanted to show up in the world. And so therefore it was not, it didn't feel good. Hmm. And when you don't feel good, there's, it's negative energy, there's resistance, there, it's hard and you're mad all the time. Yeah. And once I realized that I really needed to start paying attention to how I was spending, and one practice that I've put in place is when all of a sudden I, it feels heavy to spend the money, then I say, I ask myself, is this in alignment with who I want to be today? 
-hmm. And so for example, just today, this morning I had gone and worked out and then I had to go run up to my coworker's house to pick up some packets for my job. And it just kind of threw my whole morning out of alignment, but that's okay. I know how to readjust with that, but I was hungry. And so I kept thinking, do I want to stop? There's a really great bagel place near her house. And do I want to stop and grab a bagel and grab some coffee? And as I kept thinking about it, I was like, Ooh, that tea, I can already taste it. It's going to taste so good. And this coffee's going to taste so good. And then I had to stop myself. And even though it was what going to be five or $6 and that's where we start, we get into trouble because we're like, yeah. it's only six bucks. It's only seven bucks. And it's like, mm, that bagel is not in alignment with who I want to be right now, which is that I'm really focused on eating protein and Tate and making sure I'm eating well it was not in alignment with what I wanted. So I was able to check in with myself because even though the bagel, there's a health thing there, there's a, you know, a food story and food relationship that I'm working on there. And it also comes to a yeah. money relationship. Yeah. Right. So if I had spent that money on that bagel, I would have eaten that bagel in 30 seconds or less. And then I would have been mad at myself because I got the bagel. Yeah. Yeah. So then you like those types of check-ins, I ended up getting myself an iced coffee and that was the compromise. I can get an iced coffee because that'll, that's an alignment and that's okay. And I felt good about that. And so it's, see, it's just like, you have to be asking yourself those kinds of questions. And then it's, I'm in the moment. I'm very well aware. I'm very present as I'm paying for that coffee. Yes. Right? Compared to just spending whatever. Intentional, and very intentional yeah, in where yeah. that energy is flowing. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's just, that's the first place we have to begin is to build, bring awareness to the way that we're spending and why we're spending it. Or, and also allowing yourself there to be an, and also conversation. I'm going to spend this money on my coffee and also I'm saving money at the same time, right? Yeah. And it sounds like just the mindset shift that's happening here is taking the negativity and the sense of lack away and looking at it as a sense of energy and power and a resource that you get to choose how to spend kind of puts you back in the driver's seat. Yeah. And that's really Another thing that I want to make sure everybody understands, and this is hard, this is so hard, but you, your money situation will not change until you take a hundred percent responsibility for it. Hmm. And that is you losing a job, your job, not your fault, but how you show up when you lose your job, mm. that is something you can control. That is something you can take responsibility for you being in a job where, um, I know we're talking to a lot of business owners right now, but one example that I have off the top of my head is somebody, um, I know sh she had been working at a business for a long time, a company for a long time. And randomly, because she heard some people talking next to her who weren't paying attention, she found out that these people who have been working there a lot less than her and are younger than her make more money than her. Mm. And she wanted to, you know, throw a tantrum. It's everybody else's fault. And that is money mindset. That is work that you have to do to figure out actually this situation that you're in gets to be your responsibility, which means you get to decide what happens next. Wow. Are you going to go ask for a raise? Are you going to start putting the pieces together for you to go find a new job? Are you going to just sit there and take it? That's all you have a lot of choices there in that situation. So we get to, as business owners and entrepreneurs, we get to look at our financial situations and decide, are we going to sit in that, whatever in our, that sit in that lack, or are we going to decide that we have control here and we get to do something about it? So whether that's creating a new program or a new product or upping our marketing so that we can get more exposure and get more clients, et cetera, et cetera. 
but nothing changes if you don't take responsibility because when you take responsibility, you have control and you can start taking action. So nothing changes if nothing changes, but things will change once you start take you start taking action and you're not going to take action unless you can and take mindful action take aligned action unless you take responsibility for where you're at Oh, I love it. Being a leader of your finances, being yeah. a leader of your mindset around money. Yeah. 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 I love it. Do yeah. you, MT, do you think or observe that men and women tend to have different relationships with money? Is there a very masculine relationship with money and a very feminine relationship with money? That's such an interesting, nobody's asked me this question before. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, that's so, interesting. You know, I I have felt that there are so many men and women who have more masculine traits who seem to have a more comfortable relationship with receiving money. So I guess now talking about the other side of it is you've hustled, you've worked, you've worked hard. You came maybe from the mindset of you don't earn a dollar easily. You got to grind it to earn it. And then one day when it does come to, to you, do you find that men and women are able to accept it and receive it in different ways? Yeah. Um, I think that's so, it's really interesting way to look at it. I would say, you know, I come from a more masculine energy. So leaning into the feminine and leaning into the allowing and leaning into the being of it all is even hard for me. Mm. Um, I definitely think there is a big story around the only way to make money is to hustle and yeah. to grind and to burn yourself out. And that is a very masculine energy. And so that was a big thing for me that I had to learn that it actually can come from a place of flow. So from that perspective, unless a man is a, a is open to allowing the more feminine side of his life to take over ah. when it comes to money, then he won't he won't lean into that more, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that there definitely is a difference there that if a man isn't open to leaning into the feminine that it is always going to be that way of grinding and hustling and burning out and stepping on other people's toes and but those are all things everything I'm saying to you right now so I used to work at Men's Journal in New York City and it was mostly men that I worked with in the mm -hmm. sales department they had that very masculine energy and I actually had a coworker that um, I, I've, let me back up a little bit. I have always been of the mindset that you to action equals income. Yeah. And, um, and I think that that very much comes from a dad who was a hustler. He always had a lot of, he always had crazy jobs. He was always working, working, working since from a very young age. So I think that that story just came down to me. And so it took me a really, really long time to understand that's why all of this mindset work took a long time for me to grasp because I didn't understand that hustle didn't always equal income. Mm. So, but you can see that in the more masculine world, AKA the financial world, AKA the lawyer world, AKA, um, I mean, even doctors, you know, work ridiculous hours and that's not necessarily a more male dominated industry, but, um, in these male dominated industries, it is all about the hustle mm. It is just like, how much are you going to work, work, work in order to outrun the person next to you? Mm. And I had a coworker at men's journal who was of that mindset and it was very competitive and mm. to the point of like stepping on each other's toes and to get ahead because that was the masculine world that we were in. Mm. So I, ha I guess as you're asking me this, it is coming up for me that I have seen that, you know, it's almost like men only feel worthy of the big payday if they've worked their tail off. And I'm so generalizing right now. Yes. Like, this is not based on <laughs> any actual research, but I will say that I have, I do know that women tend to be more open to the 
leaning in of the flow and leaning in ah. of being um even though it was my male mindset coach who was like um Mary I know that you're the best at doing 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 all the time he's like but I'm not hearing any being in your life mm. and it really was once I slowed down and allowed myself to be feeling abundant to be living in the moment, to be aware, to be in a space of receiving mm. that I finally was able to lean into those energies. Mm. Um, so I, I don't really know if I answered your question, but those are the things that I've witnessed. And I, I will also just say that it tends to be the mindset work tends to happen, or at least in my world, a lot more willingly by women than men. Fascinating. And you know, it's interesting because I didn't even expect you to say that. And I was almost even thinking the opposite. So maybe it's not fair to assign it to masculine or feminine, because I think there are also so many stereotypically women who are afraid of managing their money, afraid, you know, in relationships, oh, wow. they leave it up to the husband, you know, or the boyfriend or the mm -hmm. father figure. And it's really, I think that there's also a fear component in terms of money. People are afraid of it, thinking that they don't know enough to be able to manage their own money. Yeah. Where do you think that come? Where do you think that comes from? It, well, that's a great point. Yeah. So my answer to that question is that we're not talking about it. Yep, exactly. Like it's not, um, it, I, you know, at the home, it's up to the man of the house to manage the money. Not always, not, not everywhere, but that's just a story. Mm -hmm. And I would say that a big part, you know, fear comes from us not educating ourselves enough on things. Mm -hmm. um, and so most of the time, sometimes in fear, because we don't take the time to educate ourselves, we build our own stories around the truth. Yeah. Um, and I think that one of the biggest shames, the things that are too bad is that money is not an acceptable conversation. Yeah. Very to shameful. Have. Yeah. Exactly. Whether that's, you know, among in the family or, um, among friends, mm -hmm. you know, I don't have, I have a great group of girlfriends from college. We talk about everything things that, I mean conversations that make me uncomfortable and <laughs> as soon as money is brought up it's like zipped lips nobody wants to go there it's so true and it's just like why why can't we why can't we celebrate each other's desires celebrate each other's um wins mm -hmm. celebrate each other's I mean, and when you're having a tough time, we can't talk about it because there's so much shame around it. It's so true. And it's interesting, our, as our audience won't know, but another way that I know you is from CrossFit. And, you know, even in the fitness world, you can celebrate somebody who's much stronger than you are or significantly less strong than you are. And both of them, you can be so proud of and support and celebrate, and you can receive that celebration no matter where you stand in comparison to one another. But you're right. When it comes to money, that discrepancy seems so difficult. That's such a great comparison. I love that you just did that. I'm going to use that all the time, but <laughs> because a great, I would say that a great comparison is like, what if you have a group of friends who, and they happen to be a couple, there's a couple and they are well off and they just put a down payment on a million dollar house. And I can't afford it a million dollar house and I'm single and I can't go there. But does that mean that I'm not supposed to be allowed to, A, yeah. I shouldn't celebrate them. A, yeah. I should be jealous of them. I should wonder why can't they send me their wealth or should I be I, I personally think I should celebrate that just as much as somebody yeah. who buys, if I was to put a down payment on a $200,000 house, right? Like, and there's so much shame that that friend can't come to the group and say, I just, guys, I have to tell you that I we just put a down payment on a million dollar house. Can you believe it? I never in my life thought I'd be living in a million dollar house. And 
that is only acceptable if you have all people in your group who are also buying million dollar houses. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it is acceptable, but I just think it's, I personally think it's too bad that we can't have those conversations and that yeah. it, those conversations are not happening at home. Yeah. Right. And that what's actually happening at home, at least in my world was that, well, they, the only reason they have the money for that house is because both parents work. And that means that the kids are being neglected because both parents work. Yeah. Right. So there's shame being put on that family. There's shame. Now there's a story being taught to me that I, if I want to be a good mom, yes, I'm not supposed to work. Yeah right? We're supposed to suffer and live off of one income, or I have to find a husband that makes a lot of money so that I can stay home with the kids. It's just like on and on and on. It's so effed up. And I'm not somebody who wants to not work. Yeah. It's not in my blood. So it's just, I, it's just, there's, it's an open conversation when it's shaming and judging other people, but when it's about celebrating, it's not okay it's because so then sad. it's considered braggy and da, da, da. and it's just like well if people didn't get triggered by other people having more than you did then the whole co- like the whole thing wouldn't even matter <laughs> like there would be only celebration and we could support one another and yeah. give each other tips and tools and resources yeah oh it's it's a fascinating conversation it really is i am um, I wonder, you had mentioned that you recognized that you had this difficulty with the money mindset, or you didn't even realize that you were having so much difficulty. Was there a moment, a specific moment where you realized that you needed a shift in your understanding of money? I love, thank you so much for asking. This is a big shift that I, every time I talk about it, it um, lights me up and then also helps other people. So thank you for this. So I think two things. The first one was when I realized that money is a relationship and first of all, so money is energy, right? We've talked about that and I'll talk, that's my second aha. Okay. The first aha was realizing that money is energy. You and I are energy. We're just in human form. Mm -hmm. So if you consider, if you actually were to turn money into a human being and you had a relationship with money and they were your best friend. And you looked at that relationship and said, how am I, why is that person never around? (laughs) And you actually, you know, when you take the time to say, why is this person mad at me? What did we do last week? And you actually like break it down to understand, well, I was on the playground and they came over and I ran away from them. I didn't talk to them. Then it's like, oh yeah, of course this person is upset with you. When you take the time to understand how you're treating money from a relationship point of view, it was a eye opener for me. Such an amazing, it's such a huge aha. So I was like, okay, so if money is human and how am I treating money? Well, A, I'm always mad that it's never around. Mm. B, when it does come around, it's never enough. See, when it is around, I automatically send it on its way to go do this, 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 this. When it comes back to, when I'm done sending it on its way, then it's all gone. And then I'm wondering where the hell it just went because I actually don't know where it went. And then I'm mad that it's not around again. And then I'm wondering where the hell it's going to come, when it's going to come back to me. And if money was to say, well, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. Of course, I'm not going to come around. When I come around to you, I feel like crap because Mm -hmm. I'm never, you're always mad at me. You're mad when I'm not here. You are mad when I am here. I'm never enough. Of course, if that was a human, they wouldn't want to hang out with me. They would be like, forget it. I'll go over to this person who's happy when I'm around, who wants me to hang out with them, who actually sends me on. This is what I was, this is when I realized that when I'm not being mindful in the way that I'm spending and then I'm mad that I spent money on da, 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 of course money. So if I was sending my friend, oh, hey, Sarah, you're finally here. Guess what? I need you to go over to Walgreens and buy yeah, this yeah. for me. And I need you to go to here and spend money on this. And then I want you to spend, I want you to go over to Amazon and do this. And, it, and Sarah's like, wait a minute, I just got here. You don't want to hang out with me? Yeah. Never a moment, to- never like, a moment of gratitude. 
no, no gratitude. Mm. No, thank you. And also you don't want me to like do something good for you. Like you don't want to go get your hair like, or like, you don't want to, um, I don't know, save some of me to hang out with you for a little bit. And I mean, I'm happy to go do these other things that you need me to do, but like, what about like, what if I just went into this little space and just a little bit of me, like 25 of, mm. of me mm. <laughs> went into this little space where I could hang out with you and mm. earn more for you. And, you know, if you think about it from that point of view, I, when I thought about it from that point of view, I should say, all of a sudden I realized I am in a toxic relationship with money mm. and I'm the problem. And so one of the exercises I started to do was I actually started to write letters to money. So wow. when, yeah. So if you think about it, when, if you're in therapy or whatever, this was one of the biggest pieces of advice that I got growing up when you have a conflict with a friend or even my parents, I used to write my mom letters all the time after we got in fights and it was write a letter apologizing to that person, whether or not you actually give the letter, right? But that's such a like very therapeutic way to get all of your feelings and all of your thoughts out onto paper. And then maybe you give it to that person. Maybe you don't, maybe you hold on to it. And that's what I started to do. I started to write letters to money. Hey money, I love you so much. I'm so sorry that I haven't been happy when you were around, but I do want you to know I'm so grateful for all the things that we've done in life together. Wow. I hope that you'll consider coming back to me so that we can continue doing really amazing things together and we can continue making an impact in the world. And I promise that when you're here, I will ask you next time how you want to be spent And actually, I still do that, that I actually have conversations with money when I'm making big payments or whatever. If I'm deciding to sign up for a new program, I'll say, hey, money, what do you think? And if money is like, and I, that's when you have to, that's a whole other conversation about standing still and listening to your inner intuition Mm. and allowing those, that knowledge to come through you. And that's where I, you know, that's where I have those conversations with money. I'm like, how do you want to be spent? Is this something, what do you think here? And, um, once you get in tune with money, I, it just energetically is a better, it's a better relationship. It's just a positive relationship. So understanding that money, what you have with money is a relationship, just like you have a relationship with food, just like you have a relationship with your body. Hmm. Right. And, these are all necessities. So money is a necessity in life. As much as we would love to pretend that we don't need money, you need money. You need money mm-hmm. to live. Mm-hmm. You just do. You need money. And the sooner you can just accept this is a necessity, just like food, just like water, just yeah. like all of those, uh, the sh- shelter and clothes, the things you need to survive in life. Um, then it, it just helps you be like, okay, well, this is a necessity. So I probably need to work on this relationship and figure out how to live with it, not against it and not oh. live in that resistance. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's, that's when I still lean into that. I still, a practice I still do. And then the other one was when I really did realize that money is energy yeah. and therefore it's all around me. So back in the day, money didn't exist, right? It was, I'll trade you this water bottle for this iPad. That mm-hmm. was, but even though that's not an equal exchange, you get my point. So then it became, well, it's really annoying because I always have to have something to trade for. Well, let's create this money system where you have money and then you can exchange the money for the things that you need. Right. So when I was sitting in my room and I was like, money, where the hell did you go? It was, I heard a voice that said, I'm all around you. Mm. I'm right here in the water bottle you just bought. I'm right here in this microphone you just bought. I'm right here in these headphones that you just bought. I'm right here. I'm all around you. I'm just not in cash. I'm in energy. So that's where it's like, that's where the real end the understanding of energy money is just energy and it's all around you. Then as soon as I had that, I had that, Oh my God, I'm actually surrounded by all the money that's ever come into my life. And I am so abundant right now because I'm surrounded by hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, just in this one little space that I'm looking at right now, especially right now, because I'm in this office where <laughs> All of my stuff because I just- All your expensive things. So yeah, and it's just, I mean, even the computer that we're on right now, 
right? So it's just like once you have that realization that money is not just the cash, it's not just what's in your bank account, it's all around you. That was huge for me. And it just really helped me see that when I'm feeling that feeling of lack and I need mm. to switch and I need to flip the switch and um, reframe where I'm at, I can look all around me and just add up what I spent on all of the things in front of me and realize I'm actually surrounded by money right now. I love that. I love that also in terms of where you put your attention it attracts more of. So if you're putting your constant attention in terms of lack and negativity and not having enough money, you'll see that more and more around you. And when you can focus your attention on the abundance around you, I love that practice of just looking around and recognizing the energy all around you. And then it, you're right, almost miraculously, it seems to flow to you in greater abundance. Yeah, yeah. that's a so great cool. um, gratitude practice. Yeah. And when people, um, I mean, you can't, you can't be in a negative space when you're in gratitude, right? So just, yeah. I mean, and it takes seconds yeah. for you to shift that to that space. So when you're feeling down, when you, if you're looking at your bank account, you're like, what the, yeah. shit, I don't know where, then it's just a great thing to say, hold on, mm. let me let me just look all around me and see where I'm at right now. And even if it's just the clothes on your body, even if it's just the, um, you know, the few, if you're at work and none of that, none of that, you know, belongs to you, think about the things that you do own that you have access to your phone. I mean, mm -hmm. your phone could just be one thing, right? So, um, yeah, that's just, it's just really important to take those moments to make that shift because it's really important to stay in a high vibe state as much as you possibly can, because money likes high vibration, money likes celebration, money wants to be around you when you're in a high vibe state. Otherwise it'll stay away and it'll go. If you really think about it as a person, yeah, it doesn't want to be around negative Nancy. Yeah. I love that analogy. That's so cool. So cool. Oh my gosh. I can't believe we've, we've spent so much time already. This hour has just flown by. I have so many other questions for you. I wish we even had more time, but please, before we leave, I want you to tell our audience about your aligned and empowered project as well, oh. please. Oh, thank you. So the aligned and empowered project is my signature program and it is a, um, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a 12 week long group coaching program where women get aligned with who they want to be in life um, so that they can feel fully empowered to stand in their leadership. And um, it's an accountability program. So you sign up and you start by figuring out who it is you want to be in life. And then you, um, we start implementing daily habits that will help you become that person. And I hold you accountable the every single step along the way. And um, what's really cool is we haven't been working on money mindset per directly in that space, but because of the work, women have been able to level up their money mindset just in general because of the reg the everyday mindset work that we're doing in there. So we've had people who have quit their jobs, their soul sucking jobs uh, be and stepped into better spaces. We've had people who picked up their lives and moved to other cities in the middle of a pandemic and money just showed up for them to be able to do that, including a job for them when they moved there. That is a bigger payday than they've ever seen. Um, we have had people who are entrepreneurs who their businesses, one of the women in the group, since she started the group last April, her business income increased by 280%. Wow just because of the work that we've been doing in there. So it really is about, it's, it's a program where we work as a community together to lift each other up, to celebrate the small wins every day. And um, with help and accountability and coaching from me, um, and you just get to work on whatever it is that you need to work on in your life. It might be confidence. It might just be alignment with who you truly are meant to be and allowing somebody to see you so that you can stop playing somebody else's role in life that somebody else told you you should be doing. 
Um, and it's a really, really impactful program. And actually in 2021, it's going to move to a four month program instead of just three months because it's just become abundantly clear that more time is needed for this kind of transformation. Yeah, I can so, imagine. Yeah, I'll include, uh, you should have the link in the show notes to um, join our wait list right now, depending on when to the next one will be um, launching in April. So um, if you're not listening, if you're listening and it's before April, join our wait list um, so that you can know when I do open the doors to that. And um, then the other program that I do have also running, depending on where, when you're listening to this is the Money Magnet Accelerator, which is also a group coaching program. That one's shorter and more um, just fast paced because I want to make you a money magnet sooner rather than later. Um, and that's just, that's a six week coaching um, program, but also teaching. So teaching and coaching, I'm going to teach you the things that I've learned, a lot of what we talked about today here, but also help you kind of dig into those stories and reframe them so you can understand um, where your blocks are at. Because I don't think, I think with money, we do kind of get to those plateaus because we don't even understand where we're blocking ourselves from receiving more. So, and that is really, really important work that you should do with support from other people, from a community of people. And most importantly, I want to create a space where it's safe to have conversations like this because it's not really safe everywhere. Yeah. So um, that's where this, in, in the show notes, there should be a link for um, getting part of my world by signing up for the um, replays of the webinar series that I just hosted. So those replays, just so if you do sign up for them, they're from December, end of December and beginning of January, um, but they're very relevant. And if you sign it, there is a special offer in there for anybody who watches those if you do sign up for the Money Magnet Accelerator. So I suggest you watch them. Well, thank you. That's so generous of you to offer that to our audience. So thank you. That's really huge. Yes. Look at all the abundance that you're bringing to us. Yeah. So thank you for that. Energy's flowing. Energy's flowing. So before I say goodbye, I have our final three questions for you. Okay. The first one is, MT, what is your personal superpower? Oh, man. Um, I believe my personal superpower is being able to see big. So Ooh. see an idea that's really big, but then break it down to the actionable steps that need to be taken in order, in order to make the big idea happen. So, um, as an event planner, I was going to say extreme person, your event plan. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. It, I, I mean, event planning is, um, my vocation. It is my trade. Yeah. Um, so, but that's also why I feel like I've been able to create a whole business program that has all these little mm -hmm. interesting because I know how to stay detail oriented in order to make the big picture happen. And I know I'm discovering that there's not a lot of people who can do no. that. So yeah, it's definitely a skill set. Um, and I, and I would say my superpower. So for absolute sure. superpower. That's awesome. That's awesome. My second question is what is your definition of happiness? Oh, uh, alignment and authenticity for sure. I think that I have always felt the only way for me to truly be happy is to be authentic as often as possible and also to be in alignment. And I mean, that's a huge part of why I left New York City to move to Maine, mm -hmm. because I wasn't aligned with the way that business was being done there in that in the industry that I was in and just the world of New York City. It just was not, I really felt and it still feel that my work should speak for itself. And I don't want to have to take other people down in order for me to thrive forward. Um, and so that's, I left New York city and took a 50% pay cut in order to live and work here in Maine. And, um, and I don't regret a minute of it. It's taken me a while to get back to where I was financially before I left. And I mean, I've been here for almost six years now. So it's, it's been quite the journey for me, but I don't regret it at all because since I left New York, I mean, I, even going to New York was in alignment for me at that time, but, um, alignment and authenticity is, is definitely huge. So 
you'll always get what I'm never faking it when I'm on social media or in my coaching. I'm never selling you anything that I don't believe in myself because I literally can't do that. <laughs> so good. So good. And I loved what you just mentioned about having the, giving yourself permission to change in your values along the way as well. When you yes. went to New York, that was an alignment at that time in your life. And then you went to Maine and that was a new phase, a new yeah. opportunity to change direction and still be in alignment with the ever changing and growing person that you are. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love, yeah. it. Love it. All right. Our final question. If all of this phenomenal gift of your knowledge and expertise were to disappear, God forbid, if all of the excellence that you shared with us that we didn't even get to today at the main women's conference with all the incredible things that you've learned about yourself over the last few years and all your webinars and um, series that you've been offering were to disappear mm -hmm. and you were given a one minute webinar where mm -hmm. you knew you would have every human being with their headphones in listening to you for one minute. What is your one minute pearl that you would give to the world? Okay. It is that you don't have to do this alone. Nothing has to be done alone. Ask for help because when you ask for help and allow yourself to be seen and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and open and you speak your truth, somebody will show up for you. And when they show up for you, they're going to have some sort of knowledge or lesson or opportunity for you to grow. And that is going to be the thing that will allow you to truly make an impact in the world, to truly be the person that you were meant to be. And you, we were never meant to do any of this alone. And as soon as you can step into that, because there's a lot of stories in the world that we're supposed to do it all on our own and we're not valued or worthy unless we can figure it out on our own. That's just a really lonely place to be. And there's no need for it. Nobody has to do anything alone. So ask for help, invest in yourself, open the door to possibilities and show up. Show up for that help. Show up when people are going to give you their wisdom, when people are going to gift you the opportunity to spend time in their presence. And, and then ask questions, ask the questions and allow yourself to be asked really tough questions. And don't run away from the answers of those really tough questions because the answers and we do that where we mm. run away from those really tough questions because they're hard to answer because they bring up stuff we don't want to deal with. And everything you want in life are in those tough, the answers of those tough questions, because actually everything you want in life is outside of your comfort zone. So if you can allow yourself to show up for other people to help you and be open to receiving that help, they're going to challenge you in ways that you're not comfortable with. But that's where everything, everything you want in life is in that space. It's the sweet so, spot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Mary Teresa Tringali, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing this with us. Thank you so much for having me. This That was a, that was a good question. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you to all of you for joining us this hour. I just had so many aha moments myself this hour. So I, I hope that you did too. And I look forward to seeing you and, and speaking with all of you again in the next episode where we dive deeper into shame. And until then, today is going to be a great day. Bye-bye.